In this tutorial, we're going to be logging into our MySQL server for the first time. On Windows, go to the Start menu and select MySQL Command Line Client or All Programs, MySQL, MySQL Server, MySQL Command Line Client. Oh, and on OS X, you can simply open up a terminal and type MySQL at the command line. And now I'm prompted for a password. This is the root password that you supplied when you installed your MySQL community server. And now I'm logged in as root. Let's take a look at the databases that we have in, on our server. And we do that by telling MySQL to show databases. Oops, I have a typo there. That should be a semicolon, not a colon. Let me fix that. There we go. So, on a fresh installation of a MySQL community server, you should see four databases. Information Schema, MySQL, Performance Schema, and Test. We're going to create a brand new database to do some work on. And I do that using the following command. Create database, and let's call this one MyTestDB semicolon. And now show the, uh, tell MySQL to show us the databases again, and we see our new database is there. Now I'm going to create a new user to access this database with. I don't want to use root all the time. The problem with using the root user all the time is this. Root has system-wide privileges on the database server. Anything root wants to do, root can do. And that means if you make a mistake as root, such as accidentally issuing a command to delete all the data on all the databases, MySQL will do that. And so what we want to do is we want to make a user who has privileges only for the database we're working with. That way, in a worst case scenario, if we make a mistake, the worst thing that happens is we lose all the data on that one database while all the, all the other databases are left unharmed. So here's how to create a new user. Uh, let that user, we'll, we'll name that user Glenn, and we're going to assign privileges to that user to operate on the MyTestDB database and only that database. So here's how we do that. Grant all, in other words, grant all privileges on MyTestDB, that's the name of the database, dot asterisk. And what the dot asterisk means is all the tables under my test DB that exist now or will be created in the future. Two, I said the name of our user is going to be Glenn. At, where is that database? Well, we're connecting to the same database stored on our server locally. So we type localhost. Uh, it's possible that you are going to create a user who's going to connect to a remote database served on a uh, uh, stored on a remote server in which case you wouldn't use localhost you would use the address of that remote server we give a password to that user identified by say my password seems as good as any for now and now I have a new user uh, and let me show you how to access the database as that new user Instead of starting with the command line client, I'm just going to go to run, type cmd to open a DOS prompt, or command prompt if you will, and now I type mysql-u so I can supply the username, Glenn, and then I'm going to let mysql know that I'm going to be giving it a password. I type my password and now I'm signed on. So let's see what databases are, are visible to the user Glenn. And we see that only two databases are visible. Information Schema, which is viewable, viewable by everyone, and MyTestDB. It is impossible for Glenn to try to switch to the MySQL database or any of the other databases that are that's not visible to that user. So. This is how you log in to your MySQL server, how you view what databases are visible, and how to create a new user. And that's good for now.